Hey everyone, Sonic Sandrock here, and surprise, surprise, I've got some Pokemon content for you guys today, specifically that of the Pokemon Showdown variety. Now, one thing you gotta know about me is that I actually like playing Pokemon competitively. It's the glue that has held my interest in the mainline series for as long as it has, despite the f despite the fact that I felt that the mainline games have kind of stagnated since the 2010s. I think the last Pokemon game that I marginally enjoyed was Pokemon XY, but even then, that's where I started noticing a lot of the derivative cracks in the formula. The nail in the coffin really came about with Pokemon Omega Ruby and Sapphire, where I, at that point I realized I think I was just done with mainline Pokemon games. I didn't really care about them anymore. The exploration wasn't as good as it used to be. Um, the storytelling wasn't as engaging. And the, the, the variety in gameplay and uh, end game stuff just wasn't hitting as much as it used to back in the old days. So I just got kind of tired of playing the mainline games and uh, I figured the thing that I care most about in Pokemon at this point, being the competitive scene, could be easily accessed through Pokemon Showdown. So I started playing Pokemon competitively through Showdown, and um, I started even getting good at it. But somewhere around late 2018, I stopped playing Pokemon Showdown, and I haven't been on there for the last three plus years. So suffice it to say, I, I'm pretty rusty. But I've about a week ago, I kind of got re my, my interest in the, the Pokemon competitive scene got revitalized and I've been sort of just playing around with some teams and kind of learning the ropes again. I copied this Sun team off of one of Blunder's videos. In case you don't know who Blunder is, he's a, poke a prolific Poketuber and his videos are usually super funny and uh, really engaging. And, you know, they, there's some knowledge dropped on about Pokemon com on competitive battling here and there. So I would subscribe to him and check him out. He's really a good time. But yeah, I got this some team off his one of his videos. Um, it's really, it's what you would expect if you know competitive Pokemon. It's a Life Orb, Venusaur with Chlorophyll. You got the uh, Drought ability Torkoal with uh, Heat Rock to extend the, um, the sun to eight turns. You've got uh, Tornado Steering with Heavy Duty Boots. Um, we've got the Scarf Victini. And I also have a Scarf Dragapult because, I mean, why not have two Scarfers on the team? And lastly, I've got the Melmetal. Yeah, Mel Meadows about that business. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Mel Meadows got that stupid broken move, double iron bash. But I'll get into my rant about that later. It's not that I hate I hate the mod or want him gone or anything like that. I just find it funny that that move is just so good. But yeah, I'm going up against Event 2. And uh, yeah, let's see how I play against him. Because I thought this was a pretty decent battle. I see Azelf on the team, so my memory starts to kick in and I'm like, I remember Azelf always leading and throwing up rocks and then immediately booming on your ass so you can't defog or spin the rocks away. So knowing that, I lead off with Dragapult because I know that Dragapult is a tier faster than um, Azelf and I can get my U-turn off to put it at almost half HP. And I go straight into my Victini as he throws up the rocks so I can U-turn again because my U Victini is Scarf. And I knew that he would stay in because he might think that Victini is slower or he might know that Victini is Scarf. Either way, he, I wanted to get rid of it. He goes into Tapu Koko, I'm back into my Dragapult. I knew I'd get some switch advantage by U-turning on Tapu Koko. And it turns out that the Tapu Koko is actually dual screen. He goes for the taunt for some reason. I'm not sure what the, the game plan with there was. I mean, I, I thought it was obvious that I'm just going to try to spin the rocks away. But now he goes for the full switch, and I immediately go for the Lava Plume because I'm hoping to burn whatever comes in. Knowing that he's dual screens, and I immediately surmise that the Komo'o is probably a uh, belly drum setup. And so I knew burning it would definitely put a, a damper in his sweeping plans. So I go into my Victini because I'm Scarf and I pack in the Zen Headbutt. And I know that the Zen Headbutt is going to kill because there is no uh, Reflect that's been set up. Guy goes into his Weavile and I'm Scarf. I have no choice but to switch out. And I go into my Med Metal and he knows that. So he switches back into Top of Coco and he's going to set up the Reflect at this point. Um, I'm a double iron bashing maniac. And as we said, that move is too good. So I use it. Um, and then I start trying to stall the reflect screen out because I want to eventually have my Victini be able to freely uh, recreate everything to death. And I knew that would be possible if I was able to get rid of the reflect. So I'm just kind of stalling out the reflect screens by rapid spinning until I gain enough speed to be able to possibly outspeed anything else that he brings on the team. But at this point, I'm not fast enough. I'm not faster than anything else on the team, and also I'm at low enough HP that Rillaboom can pick me off with the Grassy Glide because it is Life Orb. But I'm okay with that, because now I can go into my Venusaur, throw out a Life Orb Sludge Bomb, it's able to almost kill Rillaboom through the light screen, and he's going to have to U-turn out to something that can kill Venusaur. 
Now, here's where I thought I misplayed a bit, uh, because I could have kept my Venusaur, and I should have, because if I'm a smart player, I want to be able to keep my main sweeper so that I can take care of whatever threats may come up on the team. I go into my Victini, and I figure that he knows that my Victini is Scarf at this point. He's going to stay in, because he might want to use his Weavile later to check my Dragapult, but he decides to keep the Weavile in for some reason, despite the fact that his Life Orb is slowly whittling away. So I decide to sack my Torn because I don't really think I need my Torn. And I go into my Victini trying to get a U-turn off, but he decides to go for the Ice Shard in order to kill himself. Okay. Um, and get a little bit of damage. And then goes into the Drilla Boom to also get that double priority Grassy Glide on my ass so that he can get some extra chip. And I'm fine with all this because really, really, the only reason why Victini is here is so I can make sure that Tapu Koko dies and doesn't have an opportunity to set up screens to support Halucha for the end game sweep. So I go into my Mel Meadow with the idea that the screens, the reflect screens are gone. I can get some major damage with the double iron bash. And I know that if he did, even if he decides to close combat, which I don't know why he didn't close combat, that I'd be able to go into my Dragapult after and be able to pick him off with a Scarf Shadow Ball or Draco Meteor. Obviously, I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball because I don't want to miss with Draco Meteor. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty clean first battle. Again, like I said, if there was anything I could do differently, I probably would have like just preserved my Venusaur and sacked Torn right away. Um, because between Tapu Koko and a super fast Halucha, my Torn wasn't going to be able to be as useful once it got um, once Halucha got the Swords Dance set up. And so I probably could have sacked um, Torn on the Weavile right away as opposed to letting it pick off my Venusaur. But yeah, I, my mindset was, oh, I, I can I can sweep with Victini with V creates. So I'm good, and once we once I get rid of Weavile, I can actually just sweep with Zen Headbutt without having to like sacrifice all that speed. So that was my mindset, and um, at the end of the day, I still won the battle, so it's all good. So yeah, let's move on to the next battle that I got. All right, so the next battle I have here is against a guy named YGO is testing, or Yugo is testing. Not really sure how to pronounce his name, but whatever. And I'm bringing with me a rain team this time around. Uh, I pretty much just plagiarized this up by watching other people use it on the ladder. Again, I'm not quite there yet in terms of like understanding this meta. Uh, you know, I'm still learning, so I'm not sure what team compositions work best against the threats that are out there. So, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna keep having fun with whatever teams I see until like I'm able to like figure out how this meta works and what things are the biggest threats out there, so I can properly build the teams that are necessary to effectively ladder the right way but yeah that being said we got ourselves here a choice specs Volcanion. we got ourselves a damp rock drizzle pelipper because why else would you use any other pelipper but this one um on a rain team we've got choice banded bear Scuda. like my god you do not want to be hit by a choice banded liquidation in the rain from this guy it fucking melts anything unironically and well unless your name is toxapex and even then, it's like if you've got rocks and a couple spikes on a team and a Toxapex switches in, it's getting to it KO'd. I don't care what your EV spread is. Next, we've got ourselves good old trusty reliable Ferrothorn with Rocky Helmet for all any physical attackers that want to get a little too touchy with this guy. Always annoying to deal with. Ferrothorn has never slipped. Since fifth, being introduced in 5th gen, he has always been OU. And I think that's always going to stay that way. Next, we got ourselves the Heavy, boot, heavy Duty Boots uh, Torn with Regenerator, obviously. And last but not least, we got a uh, double iron bash, busted move, liquid T1000 metal looking in the face ass motherfucker over here, Mel Metal with the assault vest. So looking at my opponent's team right off the bat, I want to be able to get rid of the Volcanion because Volcanion has water absorb and water absorb allows you to absorb uh, any water attack. So not only are you nullifying the water attack, but you also are able to absorb it to restore HP. That's going to be very troublesome if I'm trying to use Liquidation from Barriscuta to sweep. So I want this Mon gone. And secondly, I want to be watching out for Tyranitar and the uh, Weather War that I'm going to be having between him and my Pelipper. Because I want to be able to always command the weather. And Tyranitar being able to use uh, Sandstream is always going to be an issue. So enough rambling, let's get right into it. My opponent leads off with a Torn and I lead off with my Volcanion. I hate Torn. I don't like dealing with it. I want to get some damage. So I go straight for the Steam Eruption. And right here, the knockoff allows uh, makes, basically allows me to now be able to switch my moves. So realizing that 
I have an opportunity to kill with another steam eruption. I'm expecting my opponent to know that and to switch out and to possibly try to abuse the water absorbability of his Volcanion to nullify my water absorb and then use the switching advantage to probably take me out. So knowing this, I decide to hit the earth power instead. So I predict the fuck out of this guy and take off a clean 79% of his HP. Knowing that he might want to earth power me back, I switch out into my Torn, and this gives me the advantage to probably kill with a knockoff, but then he decides to go into his Tyranitar, which still works out because I cannot knock off his item. I figured that he might either be Choice Band or Smooth Rock, so for Smooth Rock, I was going to be really be, I was gonna really be happy because that way, you know, Sand can't stay up for too long, and if it's Choice Band, that means Tyranitar is not going to be doing that much damage either. Um, I switch into my Ferrothorn because I wanted to be able to get some Rocky Helmet damage off. Whether he goes for the Crunch Attack, which I thought he might do, but he actually decides to predict and go for the Superpower. And I'm fine with that. He decides to switch out. I think that's because he didn't want to take any more Rocky Helmet damage. And I knew that myself. I was like, eh, I think you're going to switch out because you don't want to take any more Rocky Helmet damage. Either that or you expect me to switch out to a different monster sponge your next Superpower. Um, and I think he probably thought that I might want to go um, into maybe maybe Pelipper? Not really sure. But either way, I take this opportunity to set up my rocks because I want um, Volcanion to not be able to switch in. And then at this point, I like my Ferrothone go because I really don't feel like I needed it much. My game plan is to sweep with Barrascuta, and I just want to open up the possibility to do that. Guy goes into his Clefable, and I decided to go for my, the knockoff because whatever item Clefable is holding, it's never good. So it's always good to knock off Clefable, and I do so. And then I go for the uh, Steam Eruption because, because yeah, I figured that he's probably a little shake, uh, shaken from like me uh, predicting his mod from before, that he wouldn't want to switch back into his Volcanion, and obviously he can't because the rocks are now up, so I knew I could safely use the Steam Eruption. He goes into Torn, and I thought he'd take this perfect uh, this opportunity to defog the rocks away, which is why I stayed in, because I wanted to uh, use that as an opportunity to just take Torn out. But instead, he decides to just kill my uh, Volcanic, which I was fine with. Because then I go into my Mel Metal, maybe thinking that this time around he'd go for the Defog and give me the free kill. But he decides to go for the knockoff, which at the end of the day still gives me a free kill. I don't need my Assault Vest anymore because Volcanic is, his Volcanic is pretty much dead. And I am fine with that small amount of damage. So with, Vol Torn, with Torn down, he goes into his Bust Bowl and... I'm just going to go into my Torn because whatever Bolswell can is going to do to me, Torn will be able to handle and be able to punish him with a Hurricane. So I decided to go for it, and surprisingly, my Hurricane actually hits in the sand. And right here is where things get pretty funny because I am packing the Superpower, and it seems like not a lot of people on the ladder expect Torn to be packing Superpower these days, and I usually keep it for um, things like Tyranitar. So... I could have superpowered Tyranitar earlier back when Torn was in at, at first, but I decided not to because I think it's important to sort of catch your opponent off guard. Not all the time do you have to use the super effective move right away. Sometimes you want to condition them into thinking that they have a safe switch in with a particular mod, and that's when you surprise them with it because then you can get things like what happens here. So he probably thinks I don't have an effective move against Ranatar, so he switches out into X-Control, maybe thinking that I switch out. But instead, I go for the Superpower in the hopes that I can take out Tyranitar. And since his X-Control is done and now his Sweeper is gone, he decides to just forfeit. Which I understand because now Volcanic can come back in, and now that Volcanic is automatically going to be dead, I have the ability to just liquidate everything. So T-Tar comes in to, uh, to keep sand up or whatever or try to do any T-Tar shenanigans. I can just liquidate with my Barrascuta. Um, I also have my Pelipper with the Scald and the Hurricane so that, you know, Buswool can't act up. So, yeah, at this point I had already won and my opponent was well aware of that. So he decided to just forfeit. And, yeah, so that was a pretty cool match. But before I uh, wrap things up here, because these are the only two matches I, I, um, I have for you guys for today. Before I wrap things up, I just want to get into why I find Double Iron Bash to be such a good move. And I'm sure most people who play this game competitively understand why um, Double Iron Bash is so good. But, like, the move hits twice. Each hit has the ability to flinch 
you and has a 30% chance of inducing that flinch. But because the move is a double hitting move, the probability of being flinched by double iron ba bash is actually 51%. So how do you come up with that 51%? Well, it's simple probability rules or uh, probability math. So you're taking the two independent events, which is each double um, iron bash hit, which is 30%, and you're adding them together because you're doing the move twice. So it's 30 plus uh, 0.30 plus 0.30. Then you're subtracting the probability that both hits will flinch at the same time, which obviously you want to compensate for in your calculations because double iron bash, you're not trying to figure out whether double iron bash, both di double iron bashes will flinch. You just want to know the probability that you will get a flinch if you use the, the move. So you subtract the these two values, the 0.30 plus 0.30, which equals 0.60, subtract it from 0.30 times 0.30, which is 0.09. So it's 0.60 minus 0.09, which gives you 0.51, which is 51%. That's how you figure out that double iron badge that has a 51% chance to flinch if you use the move. And that is ridiculous because, you know, thank God that uh, Melmeta barely has any speed. But, you know, Melmeta also learns T-Wave. So if a Melmeta gets a T-Wave off on you, you're now much slower than him and he can just double iron bash flinch you you, you know 51 percent chance plus parahaxing you're pretty much guaranteed to die from para uh, para parahax flinching madness due to double iron bash so it's definitely not a fun time it sucks um and not to mention that melmetal is so damn powerful that like being able to like flinch things down with after t-waving them is just goddamn ridiculous jirachi eat your heart out so yeah that's my thing on Melmetal. I think he's a good mon. I don't. I'm not saying this because I want him gone or anything like that. I just, I just find it really hilarious that the move, that he's got such a good move. Anyway, if you liked anything that you saw here, like, comment, or subscribe, or at the very least, just hit the like button. It really helps out. If you're watching the video, if you have, if you have at least viewed it, just hit the like button. It's really easy to do. It helps me out. It lets my channel grow, and it lets my content reach other people who might be interested in stuff like Pokemon. And yeah, if you're interested in Pokemon, well, you came to the right place because I'm going to be shelling out more Pokemon Showdown content and it's going to be a good time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today and um, have a good one. See ya.